Hello and uh, welcome to this Real Estate Live webinar uh, for Invest Wealth and Forest. Um, this is our fourth week of Real Estate Live events, uh, three online events focused on economic development and regeneration. Um, we've had, uh, surprisingly, over 10,000 people at our event so far, so um, you're in good company. Um, as I say, this one is uh, this event is going to be uh, hosted by Invest Wolf and Forest, who also always put on a good show. So uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, and I'm going to hand straight over to uh, the chair of our event, Victoria Hills. Victoria. Thank you very much, Ross. Hello, I'm Victoria Hills. I'm the chief executive of the Royal Town Planning Institute. Uh, us and our members are passionate about placemaking and all that goes with that. So it's a real delight this morning that I get to chair this session, this power panel of all things great in Waltham Forest, but in particular on culture. As a 2012 Olympic and Paralympic borough, Waltham Forest is has a strong legacy to build on, um, particularly in culture. And I think as they look forward, working towards perhaps becoming a creative quarter uh, as uh, in the future, um, there is so much to celebrate um, about what that future may hold, but also just a moment to reflect on some of the the history, if you like, those strong foundations of culture. And in preparing for this session, I just looked up a few key facts, which I, if you will indulge me, I'm going to take the opportunity to share with you um, this rather rainy Friday morning to breathe a little bit of colour back into Waltham Forest. Um, part of this cultural history relates to music. It's home to many famous bands, including Iron Maiden. Of course, we're all familiar with E17, Blazing Squad, and Primal Screen recorded their first single, Loaded, at Bark Studios in E17. So I hope we're all going to have a good time this morning as well. Sorry, the jokes don't get any better than that. Um, it has a football club, um, perhaps globally recognised, perhaps not, Leighton Orient. Um, but interestingly, I also found that the designer of the Concord, Sir George Edwards, was born in Hyams Park. Um, which is of particular interest to me because I'd lived in Hyams Park in the early noughties. Um, so I'm well familiar with this borough and all the rich history and culture that it has to offer. Um, just taking us a bit further up to date, um, Sir Jonathan Ive, not necessarily a household name, um, but he was the designer of the iPod. And he grew up in the borough as well in Chingford and went to school at Chingford Foundation School. So if that's not enough to whet your appetites, without further ado, I'm going to hand over um, to uh, Simon, who is the lead portfolio holder for all things economic growth, housing development, to tell us about what culture and placemaking means for the borough. Simon, over to you. Uh, thank you, Victoria. It goes without saying that anyone and everyone who works for the London Borough of Waltham Forest must be, by definition, an E17 fan. In fact, no council event is complete without a performance from E17's finest. Uh, interestingly, just in your Johnny I point, we like to claim him as the son of Walthamstow rather than the son of Chingford, but that potentially reflects some of the competing political priorities in the borough. Uh, I just want to start by welcoming you all and saying thank you very much for your interest in our corner of North East London. Uh, I've been asked to talk about who we are as a borough and the importance of culture within that. And I want to start with a little bit of an anecdote because it was about two years ago, two years ago, probably just over two years ago, in fact, and I'm looking at Lorna on my screen to confirm this, but she cannot know that, that I think everybody in the senior leadership team at Waltham Forest the Wolfram Forest Cabinet, the leader of the council, Councillor Claire Cockill, was gathered on a cold Wanstead flat to see Damon Irwin, Damon Irwin uh, formerly a Leighton Stone resident, play not just with his bandmates of Blur, but also to play with a host of musicians from not just across Wolfram Forest and the country, but across Africa and emerging talent in the third world more widely. And the fact that so many of us were there was not just testament to the fact that there are a lot of Blur fans in the council, but to the importance that each and every person within the leadership team of the council places on culture and of ensuring as well that all of our people have access to culture, not just as amenity, but as an opportunity to future career growth uh, and progression and enabling a rich and fulfilled life. 
Who are we as a borough? Well, we are a very, very ambitious borough. We have huge and ambitious plans for growth, 27,000 new homes, the regeneration of our eight town centres, our growth and transformation areas as well over the next 15 years. A big part of that is going to be driven by the council's own uh, delivery programmes and by our own development sites. And if it looks as if I'm in a particularly uninspiring corner of the town hall this morning, I am. And that is because at the moment, the office buildings that we're using are being emptied. Literally, there's almost no one here. Stuart is, uh, I think, downstairs in a basement room somewhere in order that we don't end up with uh, mixed microphones and crossover. But there's almost no one else in this building because we are in the process of decanting back into our beautifully restored town hall uh, and the opening of Fellowship Square as the first phase of the transformation of our Town Hall campus programme to create brand new cultural space for all of our residents, not just in the heart of Walthamstow, but in the very centre of our borough, in a way that will be accessible to all of our people, uh, in a way in which it wasn't previously. Now, I've said we have really ambitious plans for growth, 27,000 new homes. We also have plans for growth that impact our employment space. So we want to radically increase the amount of employment space that we have in our borough. But we want that employment space to be driven by an uptick and the growth of our creative industries and the industries of the future that will enable our people not just to live locally, but also to work locally, to live modern urban lives in 15-minute communities across each and every part of our borough. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I want them, and we want them as a council leadership, to be able to live, to work, to play, to access healthcare, to access amenity, to access leisure and retail within 15 easy minutes walk or public transport ride away from their homes. And we don't want it to be a bog standard offer. We want it to be a world beating offer because we're acutely aware that unless we build culture into the very heart of each of our town centre spaces, of each of our communities, we won't be driving the growth and regeneration that we need to see not just to our wider boroughscape, but also to specific town centres where we know that a deep experiential town centre and high street is key to its future success. Culture stands at the heart of that. So whether we're talking about what we're doing at Fellowship Square and the Town Hall Complex in Nathanstone, or the £25 million plus investment in the EMD and the restoration of a grade one listed cinema into a new state-of-the-art theatre in Walthamstow, or what we're seeking to do in Leighton with the creation of Coronation Square, 750 new homes and new civic space, we're absolutely clear that not just ambition, not just opportunity, but cultural and creative opportunity for all of our people, creating the jobs, creating the route ways into jobs, must be a fundamental part of it. And that's become much more important as a consequence of COVID. We've gone from being a low unemployment borough, in fact, we had the third highest employment rate of any borough in London, to the borough that has been hardest hit by the uptick in universal credit claims. We take that very seriously. We put connecting our people into jobs at the very heart of our COVID recovery strategy, but that means focusing on growth. It means focusing on creating great places to live and great places to work, of being really proactive in it. And other than culture, the one thing that makes us stand out is our determination to use a very happy phrase at the moment, to build that better, but to put our money where our mouths are as we do that, to invest directly as a council, to act as a spur to wider investment. So it gives me immense pride that I'm leading a £520 million capital investment strategy. But that strategy, which impacts on culture, on house building, on what we're seeking to do with our wider municipal estate, will leverage £6 billion worth of investment that will transform the lives of our people enabling them to live richly, cleanly and greenly in dense urban environments that are fit for purpose, fit for the future, um, and give them the opportunities that they all so richly deserve. And I, one final point, if I may, Vicky, before I stop, I can do this because I'm absolutely blessed with perhaps the best development culture and creativity team in London, if not the country. And it's the exceptional people who are going to talk after me that make all of this happen. So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for my five minutes in, I would say the sun, but it's clearly the wettest June day in a very, very long time. So 
in the rain. Well, thank you very much. And at the Royal Town Planning Institute, we always say that successful placemaking starts with the political leadership, the champion who sets out that vision. So we've had that very strong vision set out this morning. Um, As you say, it then falls to the executive to translate that vision um, and to actually, most importantly, deliver it. So it's a great pleasure that I'm now handing over to a a previous colleague of mine from our City Hall days, uh, the very eminent Stuart Murray. How, Stuart, are you going to translate this strategic vision into delivery? Over to you. Thanks, Victoria, and um, no pressure then. And Simon, I think, set the context. I I think we've been on a journey now uh, on this growth and investment agenda, which is a really positive, inclusive, good growth, green growth based uh, regeneration program. And the way that uh, that Simon and his leadership uh, and our cabinet have led that process uh, has been instrumental for us to really rise to the most, most exciting challenges in a borough that really means business and wants to do business uh, and be in the sort of the top the top gear uh, and the top level of delivery. And um, this is an ongoing journey. The, there are cranes all over the borough. Um, and despite the pandemic, we have not stopped. In fact, if anything, the pandemic has made us accelerate programmes and be more determined to get into the best position for economic recovery post-pandemic shock. Uh, and... Simon described that our residents and our businesses have had a really hard time. Um, And the real challenge now is to make sure that with those people that have been displaced, particularly 10,000 plus people who have been either furloughed or on universal credit, unemployed, uh, particularly those in the hospitality, the entertainment sector, and those businesses are really hard hit, we are going to make sure that they get access to the real huge opportunities and investments in the borough. And we are launching a, a jobs recovery action plan uh, later this summer. We are targeting working with the GLA and other key agencies and partners, and delivery partners in particular, and our contractors, most importantly, to provide apprenticeships, skills, training opportunities, new jobs. And we set ourselves a really ambitious target of 10,000 new jobs over uh, the lifetime of our local plan, but a thousand new jobs in the next year or two as a post-economic recovery uh, coming out of COVID. And this has been a whole transformational shift, delivering Simon's and the council's vision to make sure that we have every project on the table out there, particularly those which the council has leverage with. You've heard about our town hall project, which phase one is complete on uh, next week, uh, which has been with an amazing programme being delivered through the through the pandemic, and that will create a new a new hub, as well as a cultural hub, and create a new destination and also a home for a thousand more people. Uh, and it will be the, the centre of the borough. Uh, we've got Black Horse Lane, where we uh, are working with the GLA on a creative enterprise zone. Uh, we're helping those businesses get through the, 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 the pandemic. Uh, we've already got a whole new neighbourhood down here. You might say we've created a 15 minute city a uh, new modern urban living quarter down in, beside the wetlands. Um, and the wetlands, I must say to everybody who hasn't gone up there, go and see that because that is uh, an amazing offer for uh, London as well as for Wolfram Forest residents. Uh, and we've got a, a big focus on all our sites. Uh, local depot is one of the council's depot sites that we're bringing forward another 15 minute neighborhood opportunity. Lee Bridge area is transforming as we speak. Um, we secured with a, a recent development partner to get a new station there on the overground uh, and we've got new development and new investment in the local community in public spaces uh, and a green agenda coming forward in that area which has been very industrial and we're supporting our industries working with the GLA and TFL around protecting our strategic industrial locations. At Black Horse Lane we've got an amazing new opportunity with a serious investor uh, and one of our major industrial estates to create a thousand new jobs there, very creative, uh, the new growth sectors, uh, and we're hoping to work in partnership. It's a very uh, much our DNA working in partnership with the private and public sector uh, and the third sector to make sure we can deliver, deliver those ambitions. In the south of the borough, Leighton Mills and New Spitalfields, we uh, are bringing forward the biggest growth area in the borough. We're talking about 10,000 homes, 
uh, probably about 5,000 jobs. We've got a great partnership with landowners, particularly the City of London Corporation, uh, where we're developing a new master plan for uh, four major big sites. These are these are large, chunky development opportunities. And that master plan is coming forward. Uh, we've got Scott in, in the coming months uh, with the corporation and other key players, the LLDC, uh, Olympic Park uh, and the Lee Valley Regional Park Authority and private sector landowners. So that will be a transformational long-term area for the borough. We're also focusing on the north of the borough. So we've got our town centres in Chingford and Heims Park that you mentioned, uh, Victoria, and we're looking at making sure that we have uh, uh, investment and renewal and high street revival uh, and support our businesses, support our communities and really capitalise on those green assets that we have in the borough particularly Epping Forest uh, and our parks and our gardens. You know, we're rich as a borough in green spaces and they're on everybody's doorstep. In where the town hall is located, we've got a new forest road corridor. We've got big developers also uh, surrounding the council's uh, ambitions, bringing forward major schemes in Walthamstow. Uh, and that's transforming an area which was basically a highway with a town hall into a new cultural quarter. Uh, and a new neighbourhood for uh, aspiring people to come in and all their businesses. The existing residents, they get new facilities, infrastructure, health facilities, schools, open spaces, nurseries, uh, and jobs, really importantly, jobs. Um, we've also got a live plan application with Arts NHS Trust for uh, the, the, the biggest development in the borough, which costs hospital, uh, for a state-of-the-heart new hospital, um, which will be transformational, replacing the Victorian outdated facility, uh, uh, but we create a new neighbourhood there of 1,600 homes, uh, and that will be uh, an absolute state-of-the-art opportunity uh, in, embedded in Epping Forest uh, and to live in a real green green neighbourhood uh, with all the best that health can provide. Uh, and we're looking after our town centres, as, as Simon described, Leightonstone, we've got uh, a big framework there to capitalise on the town centre, to renew, refresh, create the jobs, support the businesses, support the retailers, and particularly help the hospitality sector that really had a hard time. And we're reimagining now our public spaces and our highways, we're putting in cycle lanes, our enjoyable forest programme has been extended with help from TFL and GLA, uh, and we're, we're taking back ownership of space uh, creating Cafe Society, now Fresco uh, offer. And uh, culture is all at the heart of this. You'll hear more about this from Lorna, our cultural lead. Uh, and we really see investment about cultural lead. This is our USP. Uh, and as part of our 2019 Borough Culture, amazing year, that legacy of direct investment that Simon talked about in the EMD theatre, with Soho Theatre being our operator, we're going to create artistic and cultural and comedian uh, entertainment jobs. Uh, we're going to make sure that local people benefit. And so as a borough, we, we, we get involved. We don't just regulate and uh, administrate. We get involved in directly. We've got direct investment in housing, in corporate property, in industry. We're buying up properties where the market's failing and we're getting them back into active use and meanwhile use. We are open for business. It'll be a rapid revival, a green growth and inclusive agenda, and we're very focused uh, on making sure Walton Forest is leading the leading Brilliant. Brilliant, Stuart. What a, what a great uh, introduction to some of the detail there and, and delighted to see um, that every vision needs a plan. And what better way to describe it than by having a spatial plan there that really sets out that ambition across the whole borough. So now it's time to get into a little bit more granularity, if you like. And um, I'm going to introduce uh, Lorna Lee, the cultural offer, Lorna. We often talk about culture in the round. Tell us a bit more about that offer in Waltham Forest. Hi, thanks, Victoria. Could we have the first slide, Jonathan? So um, morning all. Um, you'll have heard that Waltham Forest was the very first Mayor's London Borough of Culture in 2019, and that gave us an absolutely fabulous opportunity to shine a spotlight on the borough's remarkable heritage and also its contemporary arts and culture offer. Um, many of you know, as well as um, now Iron Maiden and others, that uh, Waltham Forest was the birthplace of William Morris. And this image um, is from our opening show of London Borough of Culture, which shows um, a sort of contemporary twist on a William Morris strawberry thief design projected onto the town hall at our opening show in January 2019 and 
for many reasons, that seems an awful long time ago. This was a, a three day event and it attracted over 70,000 people to come to the area, some of them residents, some of them first time visitors. Um, and it really captured the whole the whole year captured captured local imagination, but also gave us a real national um, attention. And that was one of the reasons that we had a number of developers who were keen to sponsor and support the Borough of Culture uh, programme throughout the year. And we're very grateful to that. 2019, as I say, it was it was an amazing year. We focused on three key themes, which we 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 thought at the time really summed up Waltham Forest makers because there's been a real history of making in the borough. And also, as we go forwards, there is a real opportunity in making creative industries, digital industries as well. Um, fellowship and fellowship does go back to a sort of a word that William Morris often used, but very much about the strong community in Waltham Forest as consumers or producers of cultural activity. And also, I, I believe that that really makes it a great place to live. And lastly, um, the, the word radicals and what we mean by that is um, it's a place that has been um, a place of invention, a place of innovation. And again, moving forwards, entrepreneurship and looking outside the box, I think, is something that Waltham Forest is, is, is really good at doing. Um, and in a way, the, um, the strength of culture, in a way, came through when COVID hit. So we just had this um, fantastic year. But then with COVID, you know, a lot of cultural um, cultural things had to close down. But that strong community spirit that I mentioned, which had been borne out, for example, through an amazing volunteering program, um, and also the networks that had been developed through through Borough of Culture, whether that was local community networks or arts networks, became a really vital part of the borough's response to COVID um, through a virtual culture program but also that vital support that the community gave to each other through volunteering and, and looking after vulnerable residents. This slide here um, is a very recent slide from the EMD cinema. And this is a key part of the boroughs of, borough of culture legacy and a continuing commitment of the council, thank you council, of investing in culture. So um, following a purchase of the building in 2019 and currently a 25 million pound investment the council is working with Soho Theatre to bring this amazing space back to life and it's going to be created as a 950 seater new comedy venue in the heart of Walthamstow um, and it's bringing back to life uh, it's going to be a contemporary theatre but it's bringing back to life some of the really flamboyant and exuberant uh, design and this is by Komina Sarevsky, um, and it's a mix of sort of art deco Moorish design, but it's absolutely beautiful and lots of it is still intact. As you know, these things cost money, but it's really going to be a beautiful place as well as um, a, a real hot spot for East London and for London as a whole. And we're describing it as a local theatre with a national profile. Um, the fact that we're working with Soho Theatre um, Waltham Forest is increasingly being able to uh, attract partners to the borough and that brings, you know, real firepower. So, for example, we're working with Soho Theatre to really maximise the local benefits for local people. We're looking at developing a cultural academy which will start to uh, create proper pathways and proper jobs for local people in the cultural industries. We're also doing work to make sure that the, the presence of the EMD theatre at a, a really key point in Walthamstow's High Street will have benefits for the hospitality sector and the businesses and the supply line. So it's a really important piece of cultural infrastructure, but also leading to that sort of economic growth in the future too. Um, so the, the, the last uh, project I just wanted to use to exemplify how we are embedding and blending culture into um, our future um, prosperity um, is Fellowship Square. Um, this also links back to William Morris. The Assembly Hall, which is just to the, the right hand side of this, this shot, out of shot, um, has got one of Morris's famous quotes across the top, often known as Fellowship Life. The actual quote is Fellowship Life is life, lack of fellowship is death. But that's um, really important, again, about strong communities, about partnerships and networks. As Simon mentioned, this is part of a bigger reset for the council um, and the town hall is being refurbished to make it a much better place to work. It'll have 21st century technology in there, but it's also a really important place for, 
for the community, for the residents who currently live around that neighbourhood, but it's also going to have 500 new homes on site and it will become a really key open space for local residents. And we all know how important that open space has been and will continue to be. Um, at the heart is, a, is, a, is an amazing fountain that's got over 200 jets of water um, and it's choreographed to music and light. So there will be shows right across the year. But next month, um, we'll see a huge golden helium balloon float above the town hall um, with an acrobat suspended underneath. It is tied to the ground, I understand. Um, but this will be part of the launch of Fellowship Square. Taking its inspiration from Morris's poem, The Sky is Full of Gold, it's going to be reflecting on the real challenges of the, the year that's gone, but really looking towards a more optimistic future. Um, that will be followed by five community weekends, which will bring people in to discover and uh, explore this new square. Um, and we're also looking forward to bringing the Assembly Hall back online as a cultural venue in a couple of years' time. So I hope I've whetted your appetite. I know that um, there isn't much time. There's a lot going on in Waltham Forest, so please do come and experience it for yourself. Thank you. Well, th thank you so much, Lorna, for bringing it to life. There's lots of places there I can't wait to, to visit, particularly the theatre when it when that's all, you know, you can just sort of visualise, fast forward, sat up on the balcony there. Can't wait to get there. However, getting there, of course, is very, very important, especially for a borough who um, is thinking local but has um, national impact. Um, something that's always been close to my heart in my career is transport and transport planning. So it's a great pleasure now um, that we're introducing somebody who knows all about that, Emma Hatch, Transport for London. Um, you're going to talk to us about, I believe, the development programme and how that in interlinks with everything we've heard about. Thank you, Emma. Hi everyone and thanks Victoria. I'm, I'm not sure I might be slightly disappointing and I'm not sure I know everything about transport planning but um, I'll try and talk a bit about property development um, <laughs> um, and link in with the transport um, side of things. So um, it's kind of great great to hear from um, Simon Stewart and Lorna this morning and um, your passion and enthusiasm that, that you speak with really for me reflects exactly the experience that I've had working with the borough um, over the last five years or so. Um, so Jonathan, if you're able to share the slides, please. Um, I will, I think it's just loading, fantastic, thank you. Um, so just to, um, the, the image on the screen at the moment is Black Horse Road, which um, uh, certainly Simon and Stuart have both referred to, um, and is, a, in my opinion, a great example of, of where developers, landowners um, are working really collaborative, collaboratively with the council um, to deliver such an exciting place and really building on the culture um, and creative industries that, that already exist and have existed for a long time um, in that, in that neighbourhood. Um, so I'm going to kind of just quickly give you an overview of TFL, um, our property team and, um, and what we're up to. Um, and then I'll come back to say a bit more about Black Horse Road as, as an example. Thank you. Um, so you may or may not be aware that um, TFL um, owns an awful lot of land across London. Um, and we, it's about 5,700 acres, I think is the, the, um, the stat that gets mentioned a lot. Um, and we have a, a huge opportunity, therefore, to really be part and parcel um, of, of some fantastic development opportunities that will help to create um, and transform strategic um, and sustainable um, parts of London, um, particularly around transport nodes. But I work in the property development team um, and we've got an initial commitment to deliver 10,000 new homes um, and 50% of those will be affordable. Um, so, so far, we've announced um, about 50 sites, um, and that's across 20 boroughs. Um, so as Victoria said, we are Pan London, um, and I think that's, that's kind of one of the key things that we bring is that, is that networking connectivity, both physically um, <laughs> and, um, and from a um, business perspective. Um, that is, however, only the start, um, and we've got you know, the capacity and the potential to deliver tens of thousands of homes in the, in the coming decades. And on this slide um, is to demonstrate our five key drivers that we talk about from a property development perspective. Um, so just to rattle through those, um, we are 
here to deliver homes um, and importantly jobs and I know that's something that Wolf and Forrester uh, have, have emphasised this morning. Um, we will use our property development and our property portfolio to deliver a long-term revenue stream um, that can be reinvested back into the transport network. We will also deliver um, infrastructure improvements that may be step-free access for instance um, at South Kensington um, or uh, cycle infrastructure at Black Horse Road. Related to that, we will also create healthy streets, and this is all underpinned by a desire to deliver design excellence. This is not possible on our own, though, so um, we generally want to work in partnership, and that's the approach that we're taking. Um, so we're working with a, a range of different partners. This is just a, an example of some of them um, on the slide in front of you. Um, and that's from national house builders and developers such as Barrett London, um, down through to small um, small businesses, small builders, um, and through to community land trusts. Probably then one of our absolute kind of key um, partners are the boroughs. Um, and as I said at the start, I think Black Horse Road um, is a great example um, of how we are working with Waltham Forest um, to deliver on our, our combined objectives. The relationship that, that we've really established, um, as I say, probably over the last, you know, really strengthened over the last five years or so, um, has been a kind of a very collaborative um, working relationship and through um, site visits, um, meetings, we've been able to identify areas where we can really make the most of TfL's land um, and the borough's assets um, as well. The Black Horse View, um, which is our project at, at Black Horse Road, um, it was a car park site um, and we are now transforming it into 350 new homes. Um, we're working in a joint venture with Barrett London um, and th throughout that we've worked very closely with Waltham Forest um, as well as other developers and landowners around us. So the image at the um, bottom left on the screen is the collectives project um, which is on the junction, the standard junction um, and I think that relates really well to this discussion around culture and nighttime economy. They will be reproviding a, a music venue in there. And I think just to link back to um, what Simon and Stuart were both saying earlier, um, I think Black Horse Road is a great example of that 15 minute neighbourhood um, and what could be created. Um, and when I was pulling the slides together, I was just recalling a conversation that we had quite some years ago with um, Councillor Coghill. Um, and I remember her saying about wanting to um, drive reverse commuting. Um, and actually, when you go to Black Horse Road now and step off the tube, you can instantly feel the investment that's going into the area. And that's both, you know, big property development, um, but also ambience improvements, cycle networks, um, et cetera. And it really the vibrancy there is, is so exciting and so energizing. And um, I think there's going to be so much to keep people there throughout the day and in the evening and to live and to work um, in that place. Um, this slide was just to demonstrate that for us, property development is not just about building new homes. Um, it's a lot more than that. So it's about creating sustainable places and features. And just a couple of examples. Um, we are Transport for London. So um, investing in um, and supporting sustainable modes of transport um, is, is absolutely key to us. Um, so by working with Waltham Forest, as well as our transport colleagues, um, we've been able to support um, Waltham Forest, um, enjoy Waltham Forest cycling campaign. Um, and at Black Horse Road, we are going to be um, delivering a new cycle hub, for instance, right next to the station. Um, I'm, so, we, I'm so sorry, Emma, I'm going to have to move us on shortly, but um, could okay. we be able to wrap, the, wrap this up because we're really keen to hear on the, the development side of it from Waltham Forest as well. Yeah, of course. Um, so just a couple of final points. Um, as a pan London um, con construct, um, construct, <laughs> construction um, arm, we've got a, a significant programme of construction skills and training. Um, so we've been working with Waltham Forest to identify local residents, 
put them through construction training um, and now to get them employed on site at Black Horse Road, for instance. And we also have a really um, significant um, commercial estate. So the photo on the previous slide um, was Perky Blenders in Waltham Central Station, for instance. Um, we want to make sure that we're a, um, a landlord that's really working with our small business um, tenants. Um, so th those are the key things for me. Thank you. No, that really helped. <laughs> Sorry for my red herring at the start saying you're going to be talking about transport. In, in some sense, it's, you don't need to because the transport connections are so fabulous, as evidenced by uh, some of what you were saying. But I, I'm going to have to move us on now um, to introduce Jonathan uh, Martin to really, um, this is an Invest in Walthamstow um, uh, event. So now, Jonathan, can we can we hear from you in terms of um, what is on the table for um, investors to come to what, in, in Waltham Forest? And uh, maybe you can whet our appetite with, with some of that. Thank you. Sure. So good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for that introduction, Victoria. And as you've already heard from my colleagues, it's an absolute wealth of opportunities and growth agenda, but really sort of centred around that political leadership that Councillor Miller has really given us in such a strong and emphatic way. So we may embrace uh, investors and also development opportunities. What I've clearly seen as part of the team that delivers on inward investment within the borough is that what gives our investors, our developers, our contractors real comfort is the certainty that we deliver through our political leadership, but also in going through the process of our planning regime, as well as engaging with our regeneration and growth team. Our property team are key in that in terms of our own corporate estate. And what we're looking to do is really maximise what we can around smoothing that path to get a planning permission, but also getting that high quality development that we know we, know we need. Um, I think what's really also important to share is that we've already mentioned the whole point around uh, how we can deliver on a number of things. Um, bear with me while I just get this into the, the correct slide. And part of that is the, the big drive for homes and jobs. So you'll see that there are new homes planned for Waltham Forest, as touched on by, by colleagues previously, 27,000 new homes by, uh, by 15 years from now, from 15 years hence. Um, we've got some estate regeneration schemes already selling well in terms of Feature 17 by Countryside. You can see on the slide some of the metrics that are going through there. A massive success for us. It's really been supported through how we can work with the remaining estates we have. So we've, um, we've completed an estate capacity review and that will bring forward new opportunities for us around the other 27 estates in the borough, Pan Borough. Um, what's the highlight of that for us? Well, clearly Marlow Road, Future 17 is on site, has new, new residents and is looking to expand. We've got site operations generating and supporting jobs. We've got a new library, a plaza and commercial space there as well, which is all key. New build, we've got 60 Bricks, which is our own development company. And as you can see on the slides, the metrics are there for you to read. And I'll be happy to send these slides around. So I won't dwell too much on, on the actual figures other than to say they're going great strides to deliver the affordable and private for sale homes that we need in the borough as part of a mixed offer. And the borough is leading that through uh, close, uh, close scrutiny, which is always important with a new chair and board members in place. Last Real Estate Live in February, we produced a, an application for discussion around the Avenue Road Estate. That's now going through a developer procurement program. So again, we're living that real dream of bringing sites up for potential market opportunities and then working them through in short order. So you'll see there we're the first successful ballot in London during 2021 with most tenants in favour of going through and getting on to uh, getting onto that development happening. Um, we've touched on at the previous uh, event uh, schemes that we've got that we have a large ownership on, and that includes things such as uh, Low Hall Depot that uh, Simon's mentioned, Stuart's mentioned previously as well. These are transformational schemes fit into the 15 minute neighbourhood and will form a great deal of discussion on how we can bring forward and really improve these areas, connecting them to some of our existing communities. I didn't want to dwell too much in terms of any of the other opportunities that uh, we have because I want you to come and speak to us specifically about those. So I'm offering to anyone that wants to come and uh, have this bespoke service, um, the ability to have a, a tour and a breakfast briefing or afternoon briefing around a presentation in detail of what we have to offer. That will include Stuart and myself and potentially our planning colleagues to really share with you the wealth of uh, opportunities that we do have. And in addition to that, 
we will make sure there's the ability when it's safe to do so to get back out to the boroughs to relaunch our investor tours which take you to each of these locations and get you to live and breathe the experience but see firsthand what some of these opportunities are and that will include specific locations such as Black Horse Lane, where you'll see the great work that TFL has done and a number of other, our other partners, including legal in general, um, as well as a number of p potential uh, new schemes that will come forward in that location. So I'm throwing that invitation out there for all of our viewers to come and see us and we will give you the bespoke service tailored to your particular inquiry and needs. And, uh, and that's, me, uh, that's me done. Back to you, Victoria. Well, I mean, what a compelling offer. You you don't get an offer like that every day. Can you imagine? And, and we've all been locked down. You, you can come out and a site visit, summer, breakfast, maybe a cup of tea. Um, what more What more do you need, really? I mean, this, this uh, very much sounds um, a very enticing offer indeed. Now, um, I've got uh, the, the job now to curate some questions. Now, in, in creating a bit of a void, um, our 60-odd listeners uh, who are here with us, our, our, our friends listening today or watching, you haven't given any questions yet, so um, the panel now will be thinking um, what happens next. Well, that's I, I'm known to be a bit of a chatterbox, so I can carry on asking questions until you pop some in the chat. And my first question is for um, Simon, actually. This is more of a kind of a political uh, leadership type question, if, if, I, if you can indulge me on this. Now, um, there, are, there are other boroughs open in London and indeed throughout the country who are in the business of promoting themselves for culture. Indeed, you, you have a, a, a semi-neighbour in West London who is currently uh, the borough of culture and there will be others that follow. Um, so what is it to those investors who are watching now or catch up on the film, why should they put the money into Waltham Forest? Why should they invest here? And why are you best in class, which I think you're alluding to, rather than go over to friends in West London or perhaps somewhere else in the country? This is your moment to, to uh, do the elevator pitch. Simon. Fantastic. So I think there's a, there's a diplomatic answer and there's a less diplomatic answer. And I'm going to plump for the latter. So what I'm going to say is, quite simply, we are the best at this. We were London's first growing college. We set a bar that was remarkably high. And I wish my colleagues in Brent all the very best. But the simple facts of the matter are where Wolfram Forest goes first, other boroughs find it difficult to follow. Um, but it's not <laughs> just culture and the richness and talent that we bring forward and the fact that this is about whole borough transformation. It's the fact that we would also be the very best partners to developers working in the borough. We will be the very best partners to investors who want to come in the borough. We will offer a bespoke service to get things through. We will make sure that we have really clearly identified red lines and where we're very clear what is politically acceptable, what is not, and we make that clear absolutely at the start. We're not going to engage in endless games of very expensive and time-wasting nudge. We want to see change. We'll work with you to deliver that change, and we will be better at it, and the experience of working with Wolf and Forest will be better than any other comparable borough. And that's a commitment I'm really happy to make because such is the faith that I have in my team. That's amazing. A real big commitment, bold ambitions, but backed up by that political leadership. But also, uh, you've got the dream team, as you say. So um, what more What more do you need? Well, what, what, what more you all need is those investors to come and put put uh, put put their mark um, or put their money where their mouth is. So, um, and it is an enticing offer. I do have another question, but um, from me, but I've got one from the floor, the virtual floor. Um, and this really relates to, you know, it all sounds excellent, um, but perhaps the north of the borough um, may be feeling a, a little bit left behind. Um, are there any comments that any, any of the panelists would like to make in terms of what, what you're doing for the north? I know, Stuart, we, we saw a bit of that. Come on, what can you tell Rod, uh, Bill? Not Rodney, sorry, Rodney, uh, Bill, sorry. <laughs> what can you tell Bill about the North? Well, I think you saw a, a whole borough plan and a whole borough economic recovery strategy uh, that we presented this morning. And we always recognise that, um, and this is classic of London boroughs, but particularly outer London boroughs, that we're a borough, a borough made up of different diverse communities character neighbourhoods uh, with different needs and different requirements. And what we have done with our local plan, uh, which I think is a real first, that we've looked at the borough uh, in all its aspects. So we have um, created uh, 
a dedicated growth, regeneration, revival, high streets, town centres program for the north of the borough, everything north of the north circle, which is particularly Himes Park, Chingford and Chingford Mount. Uh, we've got um, housing targets, we've got employment targets, we've got three, three town centres, we've got master plans being developed for those town centres. We're also working with cultural investors in the north of the borough. So we have a, I think you, you and I, uh, Victoria, were discussing a particular cinema, which has been somewhat semi-derelict for some while. Uh, and that's about to, uh, we, we, we trust, go into uh, revival and cultural delivery uh, through a planning process. Uh, and that will revive um, the town centre of Himes Park. We're also putting uh, direct investment in the north of the borough, uh, respecting that it's not the same as the south of the borough, which is more urbanised, you know. But we've we're, we've got a proposal for uh, um, replacing uh, an outdated library and an assembly hall in the heart of Chingford North and the High Street uh, to be a catalyst for uh, Chingford uh, uh, Town Centre revival. Um, that is an investment which is supported by our direct house building company, 60 Bricks, who are going to bring homes and affordable housing to help deliver that. But we're going to have a state-of-the-art new library at the heart of the community. We're going to have a new community assembly hall and a facility and an adult learning service there, a new cafe. And we're also working very closely with the community uh, so that they help influence design and they participate uh, particularly in the library, because um, the borough really takes things that are important to local communities really, really seriously. So libraries are really passionate to local communities in Warfield Forest. Uh, and this, this, this borough has invested in libraries and continues to do so. So it's an example of how we look at the whole borough and make sure we do... It's wonderful. That, that sounds wonderful. Unlike my own borough, we'll remain nameless or... or previous borough who's actually closing the library so it's great to hear that commitment to libraries um can i uh, move on to uh phil's question which is sort of um at two ends of the spectrum it may be more for, for lorna here you know tech what, what what are you doing to attract tech here particularly you know what don't go to old street come to black horse road um but also the other end of the spectrum the aged care sector um, and other opportunities here to weave in, uh, meeting the need, the demand for some of that into this cultural and growth ambition. Um, I'm not sure if you want to pick up on, on any of that, Lorna, or any, anybody else. Thank you. I'll start off, but I'm sure that um, others may may pick up. In terms of um, tech, um, so th there's, a, there's a whole strategy and we're, we're, we're thinking of uh, developing Silicon Forest rather than Silicon Valley. Um, <laughs> but And, and that, that's a whole thing. It's about space. It's about skills. That will be, a, uh, I'd mentioned about the uh, Cultural Academy where we're currently looking at developing. We're hoping there'll be a tech and creative sector type academy as well. Um, if I could just touch upon in the aged uh, care sector, um, this was something that, from my my perspective, in terms of cultural activity, was a real focus when we went into lockdown. And we actually, again, we'd learned a lot. We'd done some programs in care homes through Borough of Culture, but we had to use digital technology to 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 work with care home staff. And we had some sing along programs. We had some fantastic programs, really focused on our most vulnerable residents. Uh, we're now looking at how we can make sure our cultural venues are demented, you know, dementia aware. So um, I have to say a lot of the focus has been on young people because of the inequality in terms of COVID. But that's not to say that our work with older residents has been forgotten because it hasn't. Of course. Um, and I'm just going to weave in one last question, if I may, before I have to hand back to Ross here, because obviously those have Anyone who knows me knows I love transport and thank you for the transport question. Here we go. So no pressure, Emma. I know you're a development planner, not a transport expert. I could help you out here, but uh, let's see. Uh, well, Waltham Forest, what, what's the plan to overcome barriers of connectivity? Some parts are not well connected and cycling's not yet taken up. Are there any plans for improving bus connectivity, particularly in the north of the borough? Um, just while you think about that, obviously your jewel in the crown is the, my favourite line, Victoria line, um, you know, and that is a gateway because you're, what, 15 minutes from King's Cross? So, you know, just think of who you can bring in um, from, from that national spectrum. Uh, but I think this question is more tailored towards that local access. Um, cycle superhighways, um, greenways, any, anybody want to reflect on that? Emma, you're the TFL person in the room, so sorry, come see you. Yeah, um, yes, I was just thinking about the question about cycling. And um, I, I think the key for me is it's, it's long-term behavioural change 
um, that we the mayor's transport strategy is all about driving those sustainable modes of transport. It doesn't happen overnight that people start using bikes. Um, but I think there's noticeable change and improvement. As I said, even in the last five years that I've been working in the borough, and um, the investment in the cycle, um, the cycle highways, enjoy Wolf and Forest, there is a noticeable sort of uptick um, just from my visible, you know, visiting of seeing people using those cycle networks. I know that the council is investing in cycle hubs for safe storage, um, but it, it does take time. And, and, you know, that's where we want to um, move people away from cars and onto cycle and bus. I will just bring in Stuart. I will just bring in Stuart. And then I'm going to hand over to Simon for the final word. So, Stuart. Yeah, I think building on what Emma says, we're working closely with TfL and we've been really grateful for the funding for our enjoyable from Forest and uh, Cycle Waste, Mini Holland. And we're now going uh, north, north, into the borough to enhance cycling. The other important thing in terms of connectivity, because uh, you know the, the, the centre and the south of the borough are pretty well connected with overground, underground buses, interchanges. The north has got the the the, the overground Chingford to Liverpool Street line, two stations, and one of our town centres has got bus route lines. Um, we are working very collaboratively with Enfield Council. They've got their huge regeneration project next door with Meridian Water. Uh, it's a really collaborative uh, borough partnership with the Upper Lee Valley boroughs. And we're working with TfL and GLA on this so that we look at the east-west connectivity issues, bus routes, super fast highways, uh, uh, cycling, walking, and connecting our town centres and our 15-minute neighbourhoods and 15-minute city to this huge new 10,000 new homes uh, regeneration project with, with, with Enfield. So that is a really good example of where we've got an opportunity with TfL and another borough to enhance connectivity. Great. Thank you very much. And and, uh, and, and Simon, lastly, anything you yeah, want to add? Yeah, so I'll, I'll be really quick on this. So, I mean, we've now built, I think it's over 30 miles of fully segregated cycle super highway in our borough alone. Uh, the most recent stats said, that looking at the monitoring stations, and I think we have eight major ones on those key routes, there are now more than a thousand users each day, each way. And that's a really significant rise, and it shows that what can be done. It's not just the cycling, it's also the walking that then that goes with it. In terms of heavy rail, yes, we've got the Victoria Line, which is marvellous. It's now what 36 trains per hour. And he says looking at Emma, even though he knows she's not responsible for that. But the central line and its great connectivity into central London, what will be Crossrail. But we've invested in a new station at Rookout Road, which was originally served by two trains an hour, is now served by four. We've seen uh, improvements to the Chingford's Liverpool Street line, new trains, much greater capacity, a more tube like service on that line. Um, and I mean, you know, the other great thing is the Barton's Gospel Note line, which was a Cinderella line, two diesel trains every 30 minutes. <laughs> Now, there's now a smart, modern electric train every 15 minutes offering extraordinary new connectivity on an east, on, a, on that radial route. So we've gone from being a Cinderella infrastructure to being one that actually has increasingly good to excellent infrastructure. And we're continuing to drive that forward as a council excellent. with our partners, particularly at TfL. Excellent. There you go. What, what a, a high note to finish on as a hand back to Ross. Um, you have, you know, the sites are here, the team is here, the political leadership's here, the ambition is here, the connectivity's here. What's not like? What's not to like? Invest in Waltham Forest. Handing over to you, Ross. Thank you very much to our excellent panelists and speakers. Ross, over to you. Uh, yes, I'll echo that. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone very much. Um, as I said, Waltham Forest always put on a good show, and uh, I'm sure you'll agree they didn't disappoint this time. Um, just left for me to say thank you to everybody. So thank you again, all speakers. Thank you uh, to all the attendees for coming. Um, if you like this, um, there are connections between this session and the two remaining sessions today. Um, it, there we go. They're on the screen. Um, it, so in the Agritech session, um, you will be surprised to hear, perhaps, um, that uh, a company not from the vast flatlands of, of, uh, of Norfolk, um, but from Leebridge, um, a vertical farming company, is, is talking on that Harvest London, well worth listening to. Um, and of course, one o'clock there, we see uh, Dr. Wei Yang, president of the RTPI, um, which of course Victoria is chief executive of, and we love the RTPI clearly. Um, that's it. Thank you very much um, to all speakers. Thank you to all attendees. Uh, I hope that we will see you again. Bye. Thank you.